Hello, I'm Harold Seid, CEO of CarrotBuzz International and founder of CarrotPay, CarrotBank and recently creator of the CarrotBank coin. You may have heard for about this in the last couple of days. I think so. In the next three weeks, I would like to give you a brief look inside the basic and the goal of my current activity. Today, let us start with the very beginning, what is an ICO? Here is an excellent summary from two of the most expert speakers in the field of cryptocurrency. Sarah Silverstein from Business Insider and host of the cryptocurrency show, The Bit. And Maiko Matsurmara, legendary speaker, ICO advisor, investor and founder. Let us see what they have to say. So I really want to get every, learn everything I can from you about ICOs. It seems to be a lot going on right now. Generally speaking, what is an ICO? ICO is kind of a funnily named thing, which is initial coin offering. So essentially what's happening is tokens are being created and they're being sold uh, to the public. So it's, a, it's quite a phenomenon at these days. And what, and what are you getting? So you're getting a coin and, and what is that? Yeah, so what you're getting is you're getting a cryptographic token that you store in a piece of wallet software. And you know, ultimately the value is determined by the value of the economy that's being created by this uh, entity. So it's not like when you get an IPO, you don't have a stake in whatever is behind it. Right. Yeah, one of the big concerns that people have about coins and cryptographic tokens is that they don't actually confer legal rights in most cases. So that's pretty interesting and potentially concerning for people who hold them. So kind of like the Bitcoin is, the value of the Bitcoin is what keeps the Bitcoin blockchain going, right? That's correct. So the ICOs, the coins associated with those new ICOs are, are spurring new companies. And if that company continues to grow, then maybe that coin will increase. That's correct. So there's really two classes of ICO token. One of them is asset backed securities. So asset backed basically is literally what it means, which is there's real estate back there or there's some kind of fundamental pegged value of that token. Uh, so it represents a physical or virtual good, some kind of asset. The other class is a utility token, and that's basically used to buy goods and services in some kind of like micro economy. And how many of these are there? Well, so we're seeing about 30 new ICOs launching per day. Wow. Uh, year to date, we've seen about $3 billion go into uh, the ICO market. So we're seeing companies raising as much as 200 million USD per ICO. And what's interesting is, is that they're raising it in Bitcoin and Ether, the value of which also continues to rise. So we actually, in one case, for example, EOS has probably estimated about 700 million USD that's been raised as a function of the increase in the price of Bitcoin and Ether. And is that one of the, like, one of the things that's causing Bitcoin to go up is that you, in order to buy ICOs, you have to use Bitcoin so all of this ICO activity is actually increasing the price. So of the Bitcoin? most common platform is actually the Ethereum blockchain. So Ether purchasing for the purpose of transferring into ICO is definitely an economic driver for that. But I would say that there are actually much larger geopolitical fundamentals with respect to the price of Bitcoin itself. And we are seeing a large movement with respect to the fiat currency to Bitcoin interface, to crypto interface. So we're seeing a lot of net new hedge funds. There's over 100 crypto hedge funds that have emerged, some of which I know of four that are at the 500 million US dollar size. So they're fairly sizable uh, crypto to fiat to crypto interfaces. And one of the funds that you're invested in is an ICO only fund, correct? That's correct. I am a limited partner with Pantera Capital, and that's a 100 million US dollar ICO only fund. So it, it invests exclusively in tokens, not in traditional venture equity. So if you missed out on the Bitcoin rally or you think maybe you did, should everyone just go into these ICOs? It sounds like a really exciting thing that's happening. Well, I think I'd like to be a little more cautionary about this. One of the things that's happened is it's such a popular fundraising vehicle because it has genetic roots with crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, the problems is, is that everybody has like a cousin that is doing an ICO. 
And that is actually a little scary. Uh, I would probably stay away from most of these instruments. What's happening now is that more and more kind of whale class investors are diligencing these instruments, and that's actually very proper. And I think there, it's actually interesting that the market is self-regulating, so there's fewer and fewer retail investors that are randomly throwing cryptos at ICOs, which I think is a healthy trend. Because I do think these are very complex to analyze, and understanding the fundamental value of a specific ICO is, I think, the job of people who do that all day long as professionals. And what are the, just so that to help us understand, not so that we go out and try to do diligence our, ourselves, but what are the types of flags that you would look for as far as like as the ICO that doesn't make sense, this company shouldn't be raising money this way? Well, to me, I'm really looking for a fundamental connection to the technology underlying, which is blockchain. So to describe blockchain very succinctly, it's a really, really slow, database and the only reason you would want to use blockchain is if you didn't trust anyone right and what's a situation like that bitcoin is a perfect situation because you shouldn't trust anyone with your money and so that's what that blockchain is doing right but you know to underscore it like it's a very slow database right so if you want a faster database you just have to find a situation where someone can be trusted to run it uh, and then, so to me, when, when I analyze uh, ICO, I'm really looking for kind of fundamental uses of the technology, whether it's relevant or not. I feel like that's a, that's a key. So this general idea of like, oh, the blockchain can revolutionize everything and everything can be decentralized doesn't necessarily make sense. No, although it is one of my investment thesis points that we are at a point of peak centralization and so it, it is the case that the pendulum in many cases can swing towards decentralization in a lot of uh, infrastructures and that there are externalities, which means that there are costs that people are bearing that they didn't agree to bear in many, many different kinds of systems. Did you all get what Michael said about the two classes of uh, ICO tokens? One of them is the assets backed. The other is a utility token used to buy goods and services. Each has a benefit. And guess what? The Carapaz coin combines both benefits. As you can see on this chart, our coin is based on three pillars. Real gold as an assets backing, a strong virtual means of payment, the utility token, and its counterpart in the everyday world, cash gold. Get it, get it and pay with it. It's a cycle of security. Everything leads back to gold. Our carrot bank coin is absolutely unique. You now have the chance to buy this token from our website www.carrotbank.io. And by the way, in a few days, you can buy these tokens with cash gold and the price will be like the beginning. 40% discount and one cent per tokens. How you can get started, what you should keep in mind and how it works in details. Do not miss our next Facebook live stream. Thank you very much for our time, for your time and see you soon.